Hello everybody, welcome to the Red Bell Pepper edition of Heavenly Album Covers. And this is a really big bell pepper and we just wanted to display and show off this gigantic bell pepper with a big green stalk. And we're going to share and show and display some kind of random albums. They don't necessarily belong with each other, other than the fact that they are albums and have album covers. But still, nonetheless, this will be a variety hodgepodge of album covers, starting with an album called Annie, not the Broadway show Annie or the movie Annie, but Annie by singer Anne Murray from Canada. Anne Murray had a huge hit in the early 70s called Snowbird, which is about a bird who lives in the snow. And she also put out gazillions of albums and is still around and prob probably still putting out many albums all the time and singing. She is still around. Anne Murray is still around. And this album cover was put together by Dean Torrance of the duo Jan and Dean. Dean Torrance um, was involved in album graphics and the artwork of albums. And this looks like a collage that he did. And it's um, really fantastic. Um, the lettering at the top is really hand done and really good. I'm not sure how he did this, but it's um, really sensitive and it's a really nice image for this album. This came out in um, 1972. And um, there's Anne Murray right there. She's um, wrestling some cows, I believe. This one cow down here is um, kind of grabbing her um, poncho, her little Canadian poncho. And this gentleman on the side, he's the farmer, I suppose, is laughing at the whole scene. And this is on Capitol Records, and it's called Annie, covered by Dean Torrance, which is great. Next up is, look at that tiling, it's just um, really impressive. This is Jesse Johnson's extended 12-inch single, I think. Yep, it's a, it's a single 12-inch called um, Can You Help Me, extended version. And Jesse Johnson is smoking here. It's um, hard to believe that they would allow people to smoke on album covers, but uh, they did. He's got his uh, sunglasses there. He's um, really wearing it bold in his pink lace outfit and his fedora. I like this big jagged uh, yellow outline only on one side. And his lettering is cascading down towards the title down here. It looks like the back side of this um, cover is kind of um, dull. So there he's got a clock here on his uh, neck. Jesse Johnson was a member of The Time, the group called The Time. And um, he left The Time and became a producer and a solo guy. He produced Janet Jackson and Paula Abdul and others. And um, the next album up is a group, an, al an album by a group called Side Effects, or is it just Side Effect? I think they only have one, What You Need by Side Effect. This um, bell pepper is just huge. I can barely hold it, and I have pretty big hands. It's um, It's substantial, and I also need a sip of coffee. So let's look at the bell pepper while I do that. And so here's Side Effect. And this group was um, fairly big. They had a couple of hits. Their um, lead singers kind of um, came and went. They had various um, lady singers in this group, Side Effect. And um, here they are. They're emerging from a bank vault. It looks like they've either 
committed a crime or they've um, taken out a loan on a house together. This copy is kind of uh, gnarled at the bottom and scraped up, but the cover is still really nice. It's a good photo. I'm not sure if they took the photo and then um, superimposed a bank vault thing on top of it, or if they actually were emerging from a real bank vault. The, there's the bank vault again with the song titles, and uh, it's a nice bank vault. You don't see many bank vaults on record albums. And here are side effect. They've just taken out a loan at the bank, and they also stole a, a few bucks too on the side. So they were very industrious. And um, this is just a really nice gatefold. Their heads are very large in the gatefold. This guy is chomping down on a cigar. I think he's, he or um, I think this guy is chomping on the cigar. This guy, I think they're different people that are chomping on the cigar. I mean, they must have traded the cigar. So that's side effect. This is an album by Big Black. It's called Songs About Fu King. Fu King was a Mongolian wise man. He was kind of a philosopher who lived in um, over in India, and he was best friends with the um, late 1980s punk rock industrial loud um, rhythm band. And this is their second and last album. They folded after this album. They were from Illinois. This album actually has a, a cover song. Uh, they covered Kraftwerk's The Model. This came out in 1987. This image here was um, appropriated, and it was also taken from a Japanese comic book, X-rated or R-rated Japanese comic book. Here's something else from that comic book. The fluorescent green of this cover and also the pink lettering has really held up over the years, and it's um, really still uh, very effective and strong. This album came with a strange, uh, kind of a liner note uh, insert, which um, is all kind of um, random uh, thoughts. There's no specific information really on here, except for the group members' names and uh, so forth and so on and whatever. And um, I picked this up at Zed Records, not the Zed Records on 7th Street, but the Zed Records near Ralph's Supermarket, near the Traffic Circle. And this album is still in really good condition. I've kept it very um, safe and sound. Next up is Ash Ford and Simpson. Their album is Stay Free. This is, um, uh, let's see, Ashford and Simpson, Valerie Simpson and Nick Ashford. I gotta keep that straight. Um, Nicholas Ashford passed away a few years ago. Valerie is still around and they were and probably still write songs for other artists. They were Motown house writers, and here they are on the back of their album. They're um, having fun, and Nicholas is reaching into his pocket for a breath mint, and this came out in, I can't tell when it came out, but probably in the early 80s, late 70s, and um, their big hit was Solid as a Rock, and they had a hand in other hits by other artists. The album cover is great. Um, Valerie is looking straight towards the camera and Nicholas is looking that way towards a friend that brought his um, lunch. And they're kind of recusing on a old wooden chair. This next one is a kind of a... Uh, Hits sampler featuring Dee Dee Sharp, Chubby Checker, Don Covey, The Orlans, and The Times. At first I thought this was a, a Motown sampler, but it's really not. 
it just kind of looks like a, a Motown sampler. Back in the 60s, a lot of things had the the suffix a go go on it. Um, you could have almost anything a go go, uh, supermarket a go go, red bell pepper a go go, and here are the featured artist artists, and um, everybody looks happy. The layout is real uh, sweet, really in line and happening. The flip side is just more advertisements for more albums. The bell pepper is still here. Um, it's a really good time to be enjoying this bell pepper here because we can document it in this video as well as document this next album cover by saxophonist, saxophone player David Sanborn. And I had to pick this up because the, the cover is just um, really crazy. I really like it. It's kind of cubist. And it's um, almost very cubist. This album is called Backstreet. And this is a backstreet here. There's a building there, the Chrysler Building, I think, New York, and some businesses happening. And I think the artist was uh, Lou Beach. And I was right. This is um, by Lou Beach. This came out in 1983. David Sanborn played with everybody. And um, so that's Backstreet. We're walking down the Backstreet. Next up is, look at that backdrop. It needs a, uh, you need to hide that scratched up messy part with a bell pepper. And um, next up is Mort Saul. I don't know much about Mort Saul. He was a very popular, sometimes unpopular comedian in the 1950s and 60s. He kind of morphed into a um, insufferable conspiracy theorist. Um, he was he was a slow mover. He just kind of set out his comedy very um, slow and methodical. And the flip side is really dull so let's go back to the front and uh, this album is called Mort Saul at the Hungry Eye probably came out in um, 1962 or something and it's a great photo of Mort he um, he was a funny guy at times I don't really know much about him and this is on the we don't know oh it's on Bird Records let's see the next up are the Poo Sticks This um, album is called Trademark of Quality. And there's the lead singer, Steve Gregory. And um, I think Steve Gregory mo wrote most of the songs. I have to take a sip of coffee. Let's look at the bell pepper. It's a very nice bell pepper. And the poo sticks were, and Maybe they're still around, sort of. Um, they were kind of um, a tribute band to all things classic rock. A lot of their songs and albums were were mini tributes and um, homages to classic rock themes. The, a lot of their songs are constructed around um, almost cliche classic rock uh, riffs and musical um notational aspects and so um the acoustics are really great their um their best albums i think are the great white wonder and they put out an album called million seller which have some uh, really awesome songs on them this is kind of a a weird live ep it's um only has a few short tracks on it and uh, this particular copy was made in the United Kingdom, came out in... That's all like a big drawing of the band, I think, and they're all doing stuff. And actually it goes this way. 
uh, first of all, I or I picked up and dragged this album cover book out of the warehouse. This is uh, covering the album artwork of Alex Steinweiss. Uh, great artist, and um, this one's worth finding and checking out and buying. These are all the really ancient albums that we see in record boxes at record stores. These are the albums that people pass over and neglect to stop and look at, and um, Steinweiss was just great. He had a, a great artistic vision and did a lot of album covers for different artists. This book is about Roxy Music. It's by Michael Bracewell, and it's supposedly about Roxy Music and their his history, but it's really about Brian Ferry and the department store. Roxy Music, but mostly this book is about how Brian Ferry got a job in a department store, a men's store, and what happened when he worked there. So it's um, very odd. The cover's great. It's a real compact and packed and fun-filled book. And it has some um, decent photos in the back. There's Eno. So that came out of the Heavenly Book Warehouse um, just about an hour ago. I, I made a request and we brought that out of the warehouse. It's an interesting book. And also an interesting book is by Phil Oakes and his book, this book is called The War Is Over. It's like a, a song book, a picture book, uh, lots of song um, songs that he wrote. Phil Oakes was a, a folky, a classic uh, folk musician in the very, very early 1960s. He was at the vanguard of the folk revolution. He was a devoted and dedicated writer of topical songs, a um, almost uh, without question a detailed um, news of the day kind of writer. He would write songs about uh, developments in politics and um, he would write songs about disasters and people and politicians and uh, he was real uh, fervent, I guess, and uh, he put out fewer than about 10 albums on his own, and then later on there have been um, reissues and additional albums that Phil Oakes did. This is a cover for Phil Oakes Sings for Broadside, and there he is singing on the street to some children. The back cover is not that it's really uh, dark and gray and uh, darker gray. And um, Phil Oaks did put out some other great albums. There's a couple, this greatest hits record contains some of his best songs, I think. And he's wearing his Elvis suit, his golden Elvis suit, which Oaks' brother 